the lesson we can learn from Esau. Esau and Jacob, the twin brothers who wrestled in the womb. Jacob went on to become Israel, the father of the 12 tribes of God's chosen people. Esau is mostly recognized as the bad seed. Some began to feel sorry for him, but should we feel sorry for Esau? There's a lesson that we can learn from him. And that is what we will study in this Bible study. To do so, we will use scripture, sound doctrine. We may speculate and theorize along the way, but that's just theory and speculation. We know the story of Esau and Jacob begins in their mother's womb. Scripture tells us that the two wrestled in the womb of Rebekah. Rebekah inquired of the Lord to see what was happening inside of her. The Lord said that two nations, two peoples, was in her womb, and that one would be stronger than the other. The Lord told her that the older would serve the younger. This we could consider to be a prophecy from God, and one we will see fulfilled later. Whether this was the Lord's plan all alone could be speculation. But we do know this, we know that he tells her that the younger brother will end up being over the older brother. Esau was born first with Jacob holding on to his heels. This means that Esau had the birthright and the blessing by being the firstborn of Isaac. Birthright was extremely important in ancient days as it decided heirs and the inheritance. Typically, because of the birthright, the oldest son would also receive their father's blessing. These two things go hand in hand. We can speculate that both of the twins knew their dad was a wealthy man. Whether or not they knew of the covenant with the Lord while growing up, we cannot say for a fact. Scripture, though, tells us plainly that Esau despised his birthright. For whatever reason, he hated the birthright. We could speculate that maybe he didn't care much for that responsibility. On the other hand, Jacob wanted the birthright. He developed a plan and deceived his brother into selling his birthright. Was this wrong of Jacob? I'll leave that up for debate. I guess you could say yes if you're feeling sorry for Esau. But it was more wrong for Esau being willingly able to sell his birthright. Whether the twins knew of inheriting God's covenant or not, this was wrong. Esau sold his responsibility. Esau sold his birthright over some soup and lentils. Again, whether he knew it or not, this birthright included both Isaac's wealth and also his inheritance of the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham and passed down to Isaac. Essentially, Esau sold God's promise. What would have been his blessing from God, he sold it for some soup and lentils. Jacob already had the birthright and Rebekah knew that. Remember, God told her. She knew that Isaac intended to bless Esau but that his intentions were wrong. This time, Jacob tricks Isaac into blessing him instead of blessing Esau with the help of his mother. Isaac's blessing was essentially a prayer of prosperity in the future. Some confused this blessing with the Lord's promise. Jacob had already gained that when he bought the birthright from Esau. The Lord's promise was the greater blessing and it is something that Esau should have valued, whether he knew about it or not. Even when Isaac realized he had been tricked, he refused to change his mind and take away his blessing from Jacob. Now some like to debate who was in the right and who was in the wrong. Some like to say that Esau wasn't really that bad of a person. Esau would end up married to two women out of the land of Canaan which was against Isaac's wishes. Esau did go on to be the father of a nation of people, 
So we could say that Esau was blessed. Truthfully, God provides for all people, good and wicked. Scripture says so. Scripture says that the Lord is kind to both the thankful and the unthankful. That is scripture. That is true. The problem that Esau had was that he pushed back the greater blessing that would have been passed down to him from Isaac by his birthright. Here then is the lesson that we can learn from Esau. We should never take lightly what the Lord has for us. Let me repeat this again. Never take lightly what God has for you. Was it wrong of Jacob to take advantage of his brother? Again, we can leave that up for debate. Jacob was a deceiver. He was a trickster. His name literally means deceiver. Jacob was a heel. Jacob deceived many in his day. His family wasn't off limits to his deceptions, except maybe Rebecca, his mom, who gave him the idea in the first place to take Isaac's blessing. Satan is the great deceiver, and he looks to deceive man from the promise of God, and that promise is eternal life with the Lord. Satan has deceived many because they did not believe or they took the Lord's promise lightly. What God has for all of us, that promise, is of great importance, and we should take it with the utmost of importance. We cannot be like Esau and think lightly of God's promise. Unfortunately, there are many people who think lightly of the promise of heaven today. Esau thought nothing of the Lord's promise. That's a problem. If you think nothing of God's promise of a heavenly kingdom, that's a problem. We cannot think so little of what the Lord has promised us. All right, let's stop right there for today's study. I hope that you enjoyed this video and this study and will like and share it with others. If you want to read more of this study, you'll find a link in the description below to the study on our new found faith website. Also subscribe to this channel for more Bible study and for my weekly sermons. May God continue to bless and keep all of you.